There are some species in our world that have the ability to reproduce without any involvement of a male. Yes, and it's even a pretty common occurrence for quite a few lower plants and insects. Moss, water fleas, some bees, and even some scorpions can reproduce just by themselves, creating their own tiny clones. The list doesn't end here. In recent years, scientists have been discovering even more species with the same superpower of so-called parthenogenesis. Some birds, lizards, sharks, rays, and even snakes. So, here's how it works. Usually, a female and a male each provide their genetic material to produce offspring. In the case of parthenogenesis, female cells replicate, separate, and reorganize, filling in the genes that are normally supposed to be filled by a male. That's how the clones are created and later born. Most of the clones are female as well. That's because a female organism has two X chromosomes, while a male one has an X and a Y. No male, no Y chromosome, and the offspring is female. But there are exceptions. Rarely there can be babies that don't have the second X chromosome, and those will be fertile males, who will later only have female offspring. Mesmerizing. So far, this reproductive process has only been observed in 80 species, half of which are fish and lizards. But every day brings new discoveries. In June 2023, the staff at the Costa Rica Zoo were stunned. The first ever female crocodile made herself pregnant. Well, at least the first we know of. And before we start looking for possible ways a male crocodile could have sneaked in, I'm telling you, there was no male. The crocodile was brought to the zoo when little and has been isolated from any male species for 16 years after that. Despite it all, she laid 14 eggs, seven of which somehow turned out to be fertile. Baffled by this, scientists ran some tests and confirmed that the genetic material of the pups-to-be was solely their mothers, so there really was no father. This confirmed the suspicions that the female crocodile managed to produce fertilized eggs all by herself. Unfortunately, none of the seven hatched. This is not surprising. Reproduction without a mate sure sounds exciting, but the lack of genetic diversity often doesn't allow the organism to develop in a healthy way. Long research on other species has shown that parthenogenesis offspring quite often are either stillborn, die soon after being born, or are very deformed. Genetic diversity is important because it makes an organism more resilient to changes in the environment and enhances its ability to adapt. Additionally, it reduces the chances of two mates with the same harmful mutation meeting and producing offspring. When two individuals with the same harmful mutations reproduce, their offspring can become unhealthy when these mutations combine. Even if the negative effects are not immediate, continued inbreeding leads to a concentration of mutations, compromising the species. This risk is why inbreeding should be avoided. Families do not marry within the family because they share many genes and potentially harmful mutations. Species with small populations are particularly vulnerable to inbreeding due to the limited number of available mates. Humans also face this issue. For example, Iceland's population is under 400,000 people, which is 10 times less than the population of Los Angeles alone, and similar to the number of people in Cleveland, Ohio. So, imagine that that's all a whole country has, just the population of Cleveland. The country is also an island, so it's not like you can just take a bus to a neighboring place. There are not too many people. The history is long. Many people live in their country and even in their city or village their whole life. Generation after generation, the chances of inbreeding are very high. Most residents can be related to each other through some distant relative. And it's not like many people know everyone in their extended family. Quite often, it's limited to a couple of generations and first or second cousins. So, potentially, Icelandic people can easily marry their third cousin without even knowing it. To address this, Iceland has a genealogical database app that allows individuals to check if they are related to their romantic interests. By simply bumping their phones, a warning alarm will sound if they are related. But let's get back to parthenogenesis. Apparently some species can do it better than others. If we talk snakes, then cobras and rattlesnakes aren't very successful in producing their clones, while boas and pythons are quite alright, often producing healthy pups. The case of crocodiles represents the first recorded instance of parthenogenesis in this species. The discovery that crocodiles can reproduce through parthenogenesis has led scientists to believe that this ability may have been inherited from their distant relatives. Dinosaurs, who possibly had the same capability. Should we be afraid that humans can develop a similar ability? 
well, at least not yet. Iceland, as well as any other community, is actively working to avoid inbreeding due to the risks and compromises it poses to the population. Mammals are naturally incapable of parthenogenesis since they require certain genes that can only come from a male. But, as always, scientists are trying to trick nature and create a mammal using only one female parent. The experiments have been conducted on mice. So they took female genes that were similar to those that must come from a male, edited them so that they were the same as if they came from a male, and implanted some eggs into a female mouse's uterus. Some of those failed, and some mice were born but only survived for a short time. But one mouse lived to adulthood and even produced its own offspring. That's quite a successful attempt. The surviving clone is, of course, a female. And anyone born the same way, only having the genome of the mother, will be a female. That's because we all have two chromosomes, either an XX, and that makes you a born female, or an XY, which is a born male. Only males have that Y chromosome that can make the offspring a boy. So, if it's just females reproducing, they will have nowhere to get the Y chromosome from and will be only producing females. There is still a lot of work to be done before it comes even close to trying it out on people, but the whole genome editing procedure known as CRISPR technology shows promise in many fields, including agriculture and medicine. In agriculture, scientists may be able to modify crops to enhance their nutritional value, disease resistance, and adaptability to different environments. Who knows? Maybe one day it will be possible to grow mangoes in Greenland and fill the Sahara Desert with crops very useful for the planet's growing population. In medicine, it can be used for gene therapy. It could be possible to correct faulty genes and treat genetic disorders like Down syndrome and even fatal ones like cystic fibrosis. Imagine a world where those diseases don't exist anymore. And there are way fewer diseases too. Because a genome can be modified so that your immune system is stronger than ever and can fight infections more effectively. In theory, any genome could be fully edited, allowing for the elimination of mutations and the birth of strong and healthy organisms. This would also open the door to gender selection and even the selection of physical appearance, such as hair color or eye color. But with great power comes great responsibility. We can't just go ahead and create anything we want, even if we get a chance to. There can be tons of unintended consequences scientists haven't even thought about. We are never fully aware of the full effect we have on the environment and other species. That's what gets naturally regulated. But if we take full control over this natural process, we can cause unthinkable ecological disruptions. Also, imagine that people start creating babies like in Sims, deciding on appearance and personality traits. How will we be able to take it under control and keep the population balanced? What if there are significantly more future lawyers and football players born than, say, teachers or construction workers? Our world is amazing in its diversity, and the effect of randomness keeps it balanced. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.